Okay, this is the fourth lecture for chapters 21 22 on water pollution and waste disposal. So, in this little slide here, just a really quick one, just look at thermal pollution. You have some locations that are dumping warm water into a waterway. And what that'll do is, of course, it's putting warm water out there. Uh, but the other thing it's doing is reducing the oxygen content of that waterway. And it makes it. Uh, you know, not a suitable habitat for a lot of aquatic life, fishes and such. So drinking water quality, uh, there's a certain way we have to be able to measure as far as the, you know, what is in the water, what do people need, what do they want. We actually happen to live in one of the best places in the entire world. Metro Detroit, Southeast Michigan has some of the best water in the world. And it's not free, but it's really, really cheap right out of the tap. <clears throat> um, just to kind of look at the, as far as the rest of the world again we're very very fortunate that we have people kind of looking out for us uh, safe drinking water act so we kind of know what's in our water every single year your municipality has to give you a statement of report of what is in your water is it good is it safe are you okay uh, a lot of the rest of the world doesn't necessarily have the same protections that we do and we'll look at some of these numbers here in the next coming slides. Something we should just kind of look at uh, later is something that's called a maximum contamination limit, the M MCLs for contaminants. Let's take a look at a couple. So these are microorganisms, and they're measured here in PPBs. They're actually not. Um, for the microorganisms, they would be measured in usually it's colonies per 100 milliliters. Um, you can see these guys we have listed here. So, okay. Um, fecal coliform, that's a big one. Um, Giardia, I don't think I've ever seen listed before, but fecal coliform, absolutely. It's an indicator organism that there could be other harmful pathogens in a water supply. But then you have arsenic, 10 ppbs. Again, that's a really, really low number. And so these other ones listed here as well. Bottled water, why would we buy it? Again, we have some of the best water in the entire world right here in southeast Michigan. And you can see some of these things that uh, we waste along the way. These plastic water bottles, um, that's a lot of plastic water bottles, 1.4 million metric tons. And again, these things are made of fossil fuels, so it's not the best use of resources. Uh, a couple little tidbits along here that you can take a look at on your own. Now, moving on into solid waste and hazardous waste. Uh, probably one of the most interesting stories out there is this Love Canal. Uh, back in the uh, 40s, there was this location in the New York area where they were putting a whole bunch of toxic waste down there. And what better thing to do is they sold that land over to Niagara Schools. And they told them, uh, don't build here, but so why would you buy it? I, I, I don't know. But in any case, in the 50s, they built a school. Then they also started building some homes in the, the nearby area. And then surprisingly, people started having some issues. So eventually, they reported over to the government. They did some research. says, yeah, this was a, uh, a dump site. So the whole idea was is that, look, you can't just bury your waste in your backyard and walk away. You have to be responsible for it. So that created a, um, a law, which is pretty long. We'll look at here a little later on, called CERCLA but it's more commonly known as the Superfund Law, which is like a cleanup law, which we'll look at here a little bit later on. So just looking at a couple uh, listings here, solid waste comes in two different kind of categories. You have your MSW, which is stuff we kind of make, your municipal solid waste, and then you have your industrial solid waste, which is very much the larger of the two. Um, it's produced indirectly by you know industries and mining and such. But then you also have your hazardous waste, which is kind of, as it sounds, some really nasty stuff that's produced in industry. So um, backing up a step here, the whole idea of waste, humans are kind of unique in this way, at least we are today, that we have these substances that are kind of like a one through process. We have things, we use them, we get rid of them, and we never see them again. Um, it, in, in nature, that doesn't really happen. That doesn't really work. So we put the stuff in the ground, hopefully never to see again, or we burn it or something along those lines. Um, in nature, most 
everything, it, it kind of cycles through. Uh, but humans have kind of looked at things a little bit differently. We look at things, well, how long would they be used for, and then eventually become obsolete. So we're going to, we're going to move on to something else. Uh, everything else in nature, the, the idea here is this guy here is what you would call a dung beetle. So you can imagine he kind of likes this little uh, cast off from an organism, and he's going to use it. So that's kind of how society or the environment has always worked. We've kind of strayed from that, but things will work a little bit better if everything kind of cycled on through the system. All right, so going back into our waste, our solid waste. As we can see, 98.5 of our industrial solid waste um, comes from, I believe, mining, or is industrial solid waste, I should say, um, with the majority of it coming from mining. A very small percentage of all the solid waste is actually municipal, which is stuff you know you and I produce. Um, and then you can look at some other breakdown numbers listed over here. We'll see that again on a couple of charts. So something else interesting along the way is uh, our total amount of waste has increased steadily uh, for about the last 50 years or so, but the waste per person actually has gone fairly flat in the last uh, 20, 30 years or so. So uh, that's pretty good. We've just kind of redirected some of our waste to someplace else. So this is stuff that we're actually, we're wasting, we're putting in the ground, we're burning, doing something else with. Now, looking at some other of the municipal solid waste, we can see that a good chunk of this material, 64%, um, is actually recyclable. The largest of this stream by composition is paper, 31%, and then you can look at everything else along the way. So we could probably find a use for all these other items here listed around in gray. Other things down here are, some of them are recyclable, some, well, I would say most of them are recyclable. Uh, looking at uh, the other listing here as far as by source, where is this material coming from? And you can kind of see that containers and packaging um, many times unnecessary is you know 31 percent so you know we can look at other ways to reduce this material just through smart practice and again how do we get rid of it what is the process uh, a lot of it is just discarded which just means put in a dump that's about it uh, some other parts uh, about one-third of it is actually recycled and then the remaining part is just burned up for energy. Uh, a large amount of stream, and this is a, very much in the United States, is electronic waste. And it usually has a lot of hazardous materials in it. And we're all kind of resistant to do this because we get a lot of personal information on these uh, little gizmos. We don't like just to kind of hand them over. So unfortunately, a lot of it does end up uh, just going into landfills and such. Um, there needs to be a better route uh, mechanism for disposing of this material. So this is uh, kind of like the, the three R's in a way, but maybe a, a little bit of a better approach to it that we can see here. Our, our priority, our first priority is to change the process so you're not producing the waste in the first place. And then the secondary process kind of really gets more into those three R's as far as recycle, reduce, reuse, and this one over here actually is another R, which is like refuse. Let's see if I can squeeze that in there. And then the last one under the last um, priority is, okay, now that I've created this material, what do I do to it? How do I get rid of it? How do I get this stuff off my hands? But really, you want to stay, obviously, in the first or second priority. Okay. So we already mentioned that refuse is probably the best solution. So that, that's the same idea as when you go to the grocery store and they say paper, plastic, you know, if it's one or two items, you got them to the counter probably by carrying them. Can you carry them out or bring your own bags, reuse them? Um, yeah, there's a lot of different uh, things that we could do to stop generating as much waste as we do. Okay, good place to take a break and we'll come back with another lecture.